Hey guys, Link here with um, a 5.10 patch notes analysis. Um, the overall, pretty much like patch notes, they all consist of buffing supports. So this is a really huge support patch. So if you like playing supports, then this is probably going to be a nice change for you because there's a lot of buffs to a lot of individual champions and also items that will probably change the game. Who knows? So anyways, let's get started. Um, Echo is going to be coming out in 5.10. I don't really know what this champion is going to be like, but knowing Riot, he's probably going to have like a dash or an auto attack modifier, some sort of shield, wall, stun, I don't know, something like that. But hopefully he's fun. Um, I mean, to be honest, a lot of champions recently have been kind of um, like, as a new champion comes out, he becomes OP and then he gets nerfed down and then a new champion comes out and then it just keeps repeating. So like Lucian, um, Braum, Jinx, Yasuo, all these new champions or reworked champions even like Victor are slowly becoming better and stronger than you know the previous old champions. So hopefully that goes in a balanced spot. To be honest, you know I'm pretty pessimistic. Probably not, but we'll see. He's either really underpowered or really overpowered. Anyways, Akali. Um, so last patch 5.9, they actually unintentionally nerfed her, even though they tried to like. Buffer, it was kind of weird. Um, it was a really huge nerf because apparently when you ulti someone, you would appear behind them, but really far behind, so you couldn't get your autos off. Uh, basically now this fix, you know, they changed it so that um, when you ulti to a target, it brings you know Akali more closer, and then it allows Akali to actually do things that Akali should be doing. Um, it's kind of weird because Akali doesn't really get played much in competitive. Um, he also does, she also she also doesn't really get pay, played much in high elo except for like you know a couple of Kali mains, but to be honest like she's pretty weak um, unless like versus like coordinated teams obviously but in solo queue like a low elo she's probably really strong and so bully because she doesn't really require that much you know practice or mechanics I don't know but it's, it's a nice buff I guess um, Cassio I'm really glad to see that Cassio has been uh, hit again. Um, Cassio recently has been seeing a lot of play, and she's one of the top three mid champions, I would say, after like Azir, Cassio, Victor, I would say, something, something like that. Uh, she's really strong because she's really, um, she's too strong in the, the laning phase. And then she scales like incredibly well. Like the fact that she can top like 1200, you know, AP at six items when you have such a strong laning phase, it doesn't really make sense. She's too like well rounded, and you know to be honest, like her biggest weakness is that she doesn't have an escape. But it's really hard to approach a Cassio if you if she plays right because of her really long range uh, from her Q. She has slows and zonings and really good put, um, push potential. At the same time, she had really good sustain, and this is where the patch knows kind of um, you know the patch h hits her. Uh, her healing from her passive got nerfed, and her mana sustain from her E got nerfed. And what would happen before is that you would just kind of sit in lane, spam Twin Fang as your last hit, you know, as your right click, basically. And you wouldn't mind because it's, you know, regening more mana than the cost of Twin Fang itself. Uh, I mean, because, you know, it's automatically refunding it. And I, and I don't really like that kind of mechanic, especially on such a, a short cooldown of Twin Fang. But, you know, that's how it is. And I'm glad that I got nerfed. So, because I really needed one. Because after you get here, it's just too good. Um... I think I would have liked a range nerf on Q or either a damage nerf on Q. Uh, it's one of those because it was just too strong. Uh, I think it's too too good. Uh, it's too long range. It's too, it's too low of a cooldown. It's just you know level one Q is like all you need to be honest, and it, it could t it's so good. Anyways, moving on to Gragas. Uh, Gragas's body slam has been nerfed, and I don't really think this is the right way to um, change Gragas because. I guess I guess Gragas is really picked because he's so he's in a way a very mobile champion, a very mobile tank. Um, but he's also like too tanky at the same time. If you get you know if you actually get farmed, but I, I guess Gragas is in a kind of a good spot. But I'm not sure if if nerfing body slam was the right thing to do. Um, it's not really like a too big of a nerf because you know if you body slam flash, it's still one of the best initiates. Like body slam flash into ulti, so. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's really annoying to play versus, um, just in general though, when the Gragas is really fed, or you know, a level 3 Gragas just walks out of lane and it's like, hey, I'm going to E-flash on top of you and there's nothing you can do. You just die. Like, you get E-flash, you get W'd, 
auto auto Cinder Hulk, and it's like, okay, that's cool. Um, I would have liked to see something like a cooldown nerf on ulti or something like that, or maybe a damage nerf on Q. I don't know. Maybe even an attack speed um, nerf on the Gragas, the champion itself. Um, moving on, Jinx. She basically, uh, her early game got nerfed, and they just nerfed the amount of uh, minigun bonus attack speed you get. Um, but they buffed her late game, which I don't think should be happening, because Jinx's late game is already pretty ridiculous. But I, I guess, in a sense, by nerfing her early game and in return buffing her, her late game, it, it kind of makes sense because you know if you're nerfing her late game, then theoretically she should hit her late game power spike a lot less. But it's not really like a big nerf, I think. It's kind of, um, I mean, sure, it's it's an attack speed nerf, but I don't think uh, Jinx really had that many problems. Like, I would have, I would have rather seen like something where you make Jinx's W much more, you know, uh, worth getting over Q. So you have to now choose between Q or W of, of leveling up. So a good a good example is like Tristana, the old Tristana. Before you could max W, you can max E, you can max Q. It all depends on what you what you wanted, and you actually had to really think about what you wanted to value. And I think Jinx should kind of be a champion like that because um, a hyper carry should, in a sense. Um, be valuing her skill points a lot and this I mean it's still going to be max Q and to max W and you're probably going to notice the attack speed difference uh, change only a little bit but whatever she is too strong though I think I'm glad that they nerfed her ultimate in the previous patches but she should be getting more nerfs maybe uh, maybe it just puts her in a decent spot I'm not sure maybe like her movement speed or something like that um, so this patch karma got changed a lot um, so to be like to be concise, um, basically you get more mantra up whenever you attack or land a spell. Uh, it's a fair amount. Um, your W attacks uh, can now target champions or monsters. Sorry. So it's not really like a I don't know. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, if I'm sure, if I if I think it's how it works, is that. You can also like W a creep now, and uh, it'll heal you as well if you match it. But I'm not I'm not too sure about that. Uh, I think that's only on champions, but I don't know. I have to go test it out. But uh, basically, they nerfed her. They completely removed the E sh uh, shield damage, and they also re removed the W um, damage as well. So if you look at these two changes, that's really big. Like she she lost two of her damage spells, and that's um, so I think they're really moving. Uh, karma towards a like a shield, you know, utility support mid sort of champion, and you know I really fucking hate shield champions. Like, you know, Janna is already annoying to deal with, and then you look at Lulu. Like Lulu is so annoying to deal with. Like the champions where it's like Jinx and Cog, you Lulu speed them and Janna shield them, and then they just go ham like with 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 super speed. Uh, I think Car like Karma is gonna be one of those champions. Like, if you can somehow fit her into a lane and you can get your AD carry really fed. And strong, it's gonna it's gonna be like that. So for example, like Karma Lulu, for example, or even like Karma Jan. Ah, no, that probably doesn't make sense. Karma Lulu is probably the best because the amount of like the the shield that you get is is pretty crazy, and the fact that you're um, getting bonus movement speed as Karma. So I don't know. It's gonna be pretty big, and also the fact that her mantras are gonna come up faster. Uh, I can see Karma being one of those like really good disengage supports when they're coming in with like your mantra Q. And then, um, especially with the other changes on Ardent Sensor, like Ardent Sensor, Karma, and speeding up, shielding your entire team, giving them all 30 extra mo bonus magic damage with Shirelios, and you have extra 20% cooldown reduction, which I'll talk about more later. Like, I can see Karma comps being a really big problem. But, I don't know. We'll see. Um, they nerf Leona, and basically what they're doing here is they kind of touched Leona in the fact that, okay, her missile lift on E was killing too many squishy supports, whatever. It's like a nerf. It's, it's fine. It's like, it's not a big, well, it actually is a big deal because it, it can, it means that you have to play more perfectly on Leona. And that's a really good thing. And I, I, I like these type of changes. Kind of like what they did to the old Middle League. Uh, maybe 90 to 70 is too much. I don't know. Uh, I wish they kind of touched Alstar, but they didn't. And I think Leona was the only... Um, support or melee support that they touched. 
I kind of wish they touched Russia as well, but oh well. Um, so Lulu um, support was buffed, but in reality, I think this is a buff to solo lane Lulu, uh, because early game Lulu had um, kind of decent mana problems, and I guess like in once you're like level five, it it starts becoming more of a nerf towards the the solo solo lane Lulus, but. Honestly, at that point, you're probably gonna have Chalice or Athene, so it's not gonna be too big of a deal. I think like having the extra ability to spam or get you know one more shield in lane for Lulu is a really big deal because Lulu is so strong early game, and uh, you need to be really strong in laning phase so that you can get to your core items of Athenes and Rapidons and then start actually doing things as you know a, a utility support. A, a sorry, not a utility support. A, a utility mid. A utility mid really needs to get farm and items to be relevant in order to do damage. So, you know, buffing the lane for Lulu, who was already really strong in the lane, um, I don't know. Um, I guess it makes sense that they're trying to buff support Lulu, but whatever. I do think that solo lane Lulu is a bit strong with certain champions. For example, like the Protect AD team comps, but whatever. Um, Rek'Sai, Rek'Sai's base HP got nerfed, it's pretty like self-explanatory, she was really strong and she just kind of needed something. Um, 40 HP is a pretty big deal, but uh, I think she's still going to be really strong because of how well she farms and especially with the nerfs towards um, the leashing range for other ranged um, junglers, I think Rek'Sai is just still going to be really strong. Uh, Ryze, I haven't really played the reworked Ryze yet. But as from what I saw, like the fact that Q is like a skill shot um, automatically makes I think Ryze kind of weak. Um, there's a lot of better champions than Ryze right now, so I guess it's nice that they're giving him like like damage buff uh, for the mid game. And, and like to be honest, like you know they're they're increasing like durations, so in a way scaling doesn't really make sense. I don't know. I, I kind of wish that they included the full tooltip or like the the detail of the skill so that it just didn't say six seconds at all rank because then I would have to look up rise and then figure out what else hasn't changed but whatever that's a small thing. Uh, Sejuani obviously a very strong jungler right now uh, in terms of junglers Rek'Sai, Sejuani, um, Evelyn, Nunu are really strong and I don't see any nerfs to Nunu, I don't see any nerfs to uh, Evelyn so maybe they'll get hit soon hopefully I don't know but or other other junglers get buffed, you know. But they nerfed Sejuani and I really thought Sejuani was in a good spot because of her utility and her ulti. Um, maybe nerf the ultimate cooldown or something like that, but I guess they chose to go with um, her early, her clear in the mid level 9, level 10 phase. But honestly, I don't think this is a really big deal in terms of her clear because you still have rangers and you can still do it. But this is definitely a nerf towards uh, other Cinder Hulk junglers when you're fighting versus them. Because you know four percent of max HP of damage of DPS loss is pretty huge, so I can definitely see Sejuani being picked um, less be just because of this small change. Um, but if you still want to team fight and have really like good initiate solid solid initiate, then Sejuani is still one of your best champions to go to in this meta right now. Because you know you can pick Nunu and and pick the early game control, you can pick Rek'Sai, but you don't have that you know solid like potential. To land a four or five man ulti with Sejuani. So that's Sejuani. Um, Scion, all they did by including this is just pretty much affirm that Riot has a billion bugs that arise at, after every new patch. So I can't wait until 5.10 hits and then there's like different bugs that just like fuck with the game. And you know, what affects competitive games the most is the fact that people or champions get these bugs and then they're like unplayable. For example, for the past like two months or so, Victor has been unplayable. And Victor is one of the best champions right now in the game, like period. Like that hero is really dumb. Like you have a crazy wave clear, your ulti is, there, there's not even like a leash range. You can literally go as, as, as far as you can and, and it will chase 80 carries and squishes down and kill them. Like that hero has too much. And like the fact that he hasn't been played in the past two months is, is actually a good thing because he's like that ridiculously OP, I think. But I don't know. Um, like bugs like this need to really get fixed or some something needs to happen because a billion bugs just keep arising. For example, whenever I play Azir, I swear to God, every time a bug 
gets fixed for his ear, like two new ones pop up. Like I think right now there's like one where the auto attack you can't like auto attack properly, and then it like pretends it auto attacks but it doesn't. I don't know. And and the other like forty percent of the time you use your ulti and then they just walk through it. Um, they buffed Tarek. Cool. All right, Tarek. Um, some shop changes. I don't know. So moving on to items, um, Ancient Coin is actually a pretty big, it's really not that, um, it's not like the favorite of supports because a lot of them get, you know, targets for lane and Spell Thieves because it's a lot of damage and it's also one of the best scaling gold pretends in the game. Um, Coin was really good until Righteous Glory came out and Righteous Glory was one of the like most cost effective items in the game. But now they pretty much lowered the cooldown to 40 seconds and they keep buffing it, so I, I don't know. I, I I actually think this is like a really good item now, situationally. Especially like you can go like Targans, and then sell it later for Talisman of Ascension. And forty seconds, like a forty second CD is pretty nuts. Especially with the fact that um, they included the twenty percent item reduction on ma on supports. Like it's gonna go down to thirty two seconds, I believe, which means that you're gonna be speeding at them. At 32 seconds, like every 32 seconds, that's pr practically every wave or every other wave. So you can do a lot of like extra plays in those. Like it used to be 60 seconds. That means that you can make twice the amount of plays than you couldn't have before with this item alone. And this is pretty much a game changing item because speed, um, a lot of things. That's why server is so good right now, right? So, um, moving on, Ardent Sensor. Uh, Ardent Sensor is probably one of this could potentially be game changing. Like, I, I, I'm not sure. Like, plus 30 bonus magic damage is pretty huge. And I don't know if it's like per. I, I feel like it's per hit for as long as like the buff lasts. And I think that's like. That's insane. Uh, let me go check how long it lasts. Um, like, before I thought it was really good and I was underrated. And it lasts for 6 seconds. That's crazy. 15% attack speed. And. Extra 30 magic damage. Imagine if you have five people hitting one person, that's 150 magic damage, and you hit them like six times. That's you know, that's easily over 1k. That's this this item alone could pretty much be like your magic damage source. <laughs> okay, probably not, but you know, you get my point. It's really strong. And with five people and if you can figure out a team comp where you can fit this in, you're gonna be start you're gonna do a good amount of damage for one item. It's pretty damn cost efficient, that's for sure. Um, so heroes like Alstar, like, you know, champions that, you know, synergize with this immediately are like Soraka. Now, now Soraka actually has a, a way to do damage. Uh, Janna, shield plus ulti. Um, Karma, like uh, what I was talking about earlier. Karma's um, shield, like mass shield with like, you know, your talisman of ascension. You run at them and you have five people hitting it, f hitting you with 30 magic damage per hit. You know, that's, that's pretty nuts. I don't know. Um, and it's also giving you attack speed, you know, so uh, and not to mention the stats itself are actually really good too because it gives your yourself 8% um, movement speed, AP, and CR. so and it's pretty cheap, it's 2100 gold, so I don't know. Uh, Build Water Cutlass and Blade of the Rune King active range, uh, cast range got uh, increased to 550 and that this is a really huge buff. Uh, because uh, champions like Vayne, um, they before had to walk a little bit forward in their auto attack range. Now they can actually use it, so that's really good. And also on melee champions, now you don't have to get so close. You can chase people down. For example, when you're playing like Aurelia or you know Zed, you, you know if you are like 100 range away, now you can catch up to them and maybe kill them. So this is probably a good change because of how strong APs are right now, and I think of how strong supports are right now. So maybe this will help assassins and. You know, champions like Vayne who have so much trouble in, in the game, you know, or even Twitch, you know, get back into doing something. So, um, banner command. Like, okay, they're, okay, well, 1200 range. So, I'm, I'm not sure what that means. I, I think they like fucked up and it was always one 1200, but the tooltip said it was 700. So I don't know, um, something like Riot needs to like make sure that their skills and items actually do what they should be doing. Like that's like what I fear the most whenever a patch hits, like to be honest, you know, that, and I feel like that shouldn't be the case with such a popular game, but that's me complaining as usual. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. Like, uh, you know, 
So moving on to utility masteries, I'm actually glad that Riot is actually changing masteries because there's so many things in masteries that can be changed, nerf, buff, whatever. And for the first time since season five hit, I think this is the first time they're changing masteries. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's been it's been a long time. Um, so the biggest thing is meditation was swapped, and now meditation is like expanded mind now, I believe, or something like that. Uh... Oh wait. Okay, so expanded mind is at the very bottom, right? Okay, or at, at in the very top. So by bottom and top, I mean bottom is like the up. The higher tiers and then top is the lower tiers. So expanded mine is basically giving 25, 50, 75 mana. And this is obviously a buff once or sorry, a nerf when it comes to like level three, level four, because obviously you would have regen much more than 75 mana by like level five. But um level one and two is a buff, I guess. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Uh this is like is this missing this is a really big deal because meditation was one of your good sources of mana regen I guess um, and honestly AP mids won't go this far into the utility tree it's just not worth it like 2109 is probably the best always or 2190 so uh, I'm not sure this is definitely a nerf but it doesn't affect supports this is a good buff to supports it means that in 2v1 if you're standing next to someone higher you're gonna get more experience and every bit of experience counts like 20 experience compared to 10 is that's that's a huge deal. That's that those experience points will actually add up. So I don't know. Um, the melee one is kind of, I guess it's a buff because whenever you auto attack or trade in lane, um, you can actually do stuff. I'm thinking about like Leona or something like that. But um, I guess it's just money didn't really count because the amount of times that you can auto people, like if you auto someone twice, it's already better than getting a champion kill or assist, right? So I guess it's a buff to melees. Um, this is the biggest change. It's the fact that the reduce of cooldown of activated items went to 20% from 10%. And again, items like Locket, you know, Face of the Mountain, um, Frost Queen's Claim, I believe that's what it's called, Shirelia, uh, whatever, Talisman, Talisman, um, Mikhail's, all these items getting 20% reduction is really huge. And in a sense, I think this is like one of the best masteries in the game right now because. Uh, supports can do so much right now and change the game just with items. Uh, I wish there were there were more items, but I think with the way it's going right now, like Mikhail's like changes the game, Locket changes the game. So I don't know, that's a good thing. Uh, I think this is a nerf to Moby Boots, I believe. Uh, I think if I did the math right, um, it's like 400 movement speed is the break point or cut point, cutoff point. Uh, if you have higher movement speed, then it's obviously it's like a nerf. So it's a nerf to Mobies, uh, which I don't really, I guess that makes sense because roaming supports are really strong. Um, but I don't know, this this mastery itself is really weird. Like I don't like I don't like things giving move and speed. It's it's really annoying and it's annoying to deal with. Uh, I believe Wander, the way it worked was that it would grant 5% movement speed until you, you, you go into combat, right? So maybe this was a buff. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's how it worked, but... I mean, if that's how it worked, then that's a that's a big buff because now you're you're getting an extra um, twenty a twenty movement speed in in combat. So unless it's unless it's it's out of combat still, which which I don't know. Like like it doesn't specify, but if it's 20, 20 movement speed still in combat, then that's that's really fucking OP. But if it's out of combat, then it, then obviously it's it's a nerf to to roaming support. I don't know. Like it, it doesn't say anything. So. Uh, I guess we'll have to see. Like, what the fuck is this, right? All right. Um, they changed the super minions, so it went from forty MR to negative thirty MR. I think, or does that mean it went to thirty MR? Like, they. Uh, I'm confused. Like, this doesn't really make sense. Like, so do super minions have negative thirty MR or just? 10, or 10, 10 MR because it minus 30? Uh, I don't know. It, like, what the hell? What is this? It's so confusing. <laughs> but either way, like, I, I don't think they should be uh, nerfing super minions because I feel like if you get an inhib, like, people shouldn't be able to come back, I think. Or they should have a really hard time coming back. 
But I think right now, like, inhibs don't really do too much. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess I guess it's fair that um, like mage users couldn't um, deal with super minions, and I guess physical like I don't know whatever. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll have to see how it goes. Uh, this was another big change. Um, they basically like destroyed any like possibility of you jungling <laughs> as a range, because now you just take way too much damage, and you're just gonna die or you're gonna have to base fight the second camp, and that's like. That's really depressing. Like, I don't know. Like, this is really depressing. Like, I, I wish like jungling shouldn't just be limited to fucking Cinder Hulk melee champions like Rexai and Evelyn. Like, uh, you know, even when I'm playing in normal games, like I I've seen people play like Jinx, like Twitch, and they're having fun, you know, as 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 like junglers. But like now they can't do that anymore, and I don't think that's right. Uh, like already you don't see that see it that much. Like the only range jungler in league that you really see it's like nidalee right or elise but now it's i don't know it's this is kind of really random i guess you can't see like nar jungle anymore as well or tf jungle but uh, it's, it's a really random change i don't know the jungle itself is, is already too hard i think and i think the, the camps are um too high of a uh, respawn time I don't know. I like this change. You can hide like annoying critters that block your field of vision in the game. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Howling Abyss, like, doesn't matter. Don't really care about that. Um, this is really nice because um, I remember one time I whenever I'm I'm like logging into League, there's a lot of friend requests and uh, I didn't realize that I was gonna be inactive for like my elo was gonna decay and I just press X like to everything and, and the warning only pops up once and now I, I went from 900 LP to 300 LP from uh, because I didn't play one ranked game within like a week or something like that so yep that was that was great that was that was a good time just because I, I didn't see it. So I guess it's nice that they're being more active with it. And then uh, this was a really big bug change that they finally fixed. It's been around since Trinkets ever fucking got created. Um, thank God. I don't know. So um, to pretty much sum it up, this is a huge support patch. I expect um, supports to be really strong this game. Or this like meta, I guess. I don't know. The, a lot of the, the strong top laners, um, mid laners, junglers are all going to be there. But I can definitely see supports like Karma and Lulu. Um, or like really annoying protect the AD comps like Arise because of Karma. I'm not even sure. Or some, some stupid thing with Art and Sensor. I, I'm pretty... Like, I worry that people won't use this item. But I think I actually think it's really good. Um, I think if supports get like farm... Like this, this itself is war farming for. If you give a support like twenty one hundred gold, and he 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 gets this, this this item is gonna be really good. Um, overall, it's like it's a decent buffs to assassins like uh, Kali, like Zed. Uh, I know Zed got nerfed a lot. I don't know, but yeah, uh, I I mean the patch doesn't really do much, so oh well, I guess I should say it doesn't do much, but it does it does a fair amount. But it's not something that I think a lot of people were expecting. Ash is OP still, by the way. But I think that's it. Um, thanks for watching. This is Link. If you liked it, if you liked this video, subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, and I'll try to upload more content like this. Bye-bye.